now want to move on and talk about the uh, supply and demand fundamental factors for natural gas since we've covered a pretty extensive number of them for crude oil. Now unlike WTI, the North American natural gas market is driven more by domestic factors than global. However, that will change at the end of 2015 or early 2016 as we actually start exporting LNG in a very large volume. But for now, not all the same things that influence crude oil prices can be applied to natural gas. For instance, geopolitical events and global economic conditions have little impact on natural gas direction here in the U.S. So here are some of the more relevant factors that influence North American natural gas prices. Okay, one of the more obvious ones again is weather. Natural gas is used for both home heating as well as to fuel power plants. So both winter and summer seasons can have an impact on natural gas prices depending on the region. Extreme winters such as that of 2013-2014 can lead to supply shortages and record high prices as can excessively hot summers. The converse is also true in that mild winters and summers can result in surplus supplies and lower prices. As with oil, heating degree days are an important factor of demand for natural gas during cold weather. However, we must also monitor the cooling degree days during the hotter periods. The domestic economy. Again, since North American natural gas is not yet a truly global commodity, global economic conditions are not viewed as having a direct impact on prices. However, the many potential domestic economic factors that we talked about that can influence crude oil have to be taken into consideration for natural gas as well. Supply and demand statistics. Here again, as with crude, the same sources of data on production and consumption for natural gas provide basic fundamental information. Now there is a weekly report, uh, just as with the crude inventory report, it's a weekly storage report uh, for natural gas. So in the same fashion that the EIA reports on changes in crude oil and distillates inventory, they also publish a weekly report on the status of U.S. natural gas inventories. Each Thursday at 9.30 a.m. Eastern U.S. time, the EI releases, it, releases its weekly natural gas storage report, representing the prior week's change in natural gas inventory at the country's underground storage facilities. And the report breaks down as follows. First of all, there's a regional breakdown. Okay? It's the activity for the EIA-defined regions, as shown in Figure 7 below. These include major consuming regions, both east and west, as well as the eight-state producing region. The producing region is further broke down broken down into salt and non-salt storage facilities with the majority of the salt caverns existing along the Gulf Coast. Injections, that is gas added to storage, and withdrawals, that is gas removed from storage by region, can be telling about weather conditions in each area. A good balance is where the consuming regions are withdrawing gas while the producing region is injecting gas. Total gas and storage. This is the first thing that traders and others involved in natural gas markets will look to for guidance. It is the change in storage levels from one week to the next. Additions to storage, that is injections, on their face would be deemed as bearish at pri as a bearish price signal. That is, production exceeded demand for that prior week. Now the converse is true for removal of gas from storage or what we call withdrawals. The indication is that demand exceeded production for the prior week and so we had to draw on the extra supplies in the ground. Now, prior to the release of the port report, analysts have compiled forecasts, and the variance of the actual volume to these predictions causes immediate and sometimes extreme reaction by traders. And again, this is exactly the same thing we talked about when we talked about crude oil. Prior to these reports, there are analysts who put down an estimate of what they think the report's going to say, and traders will immediately trade off of forecasted versus actual. Now, another aspect that's shown in the uh, natural gas storage report is the comparison to the year ago. Okay, so this data, both in volumetric and percent of variance formats, be represents the current inventory level compared with the same period as the prior year. So in order to truly interpret this accurately, one must know the prior year's weather as well as current weather forecasts. And then we have the comparison to the five-year average. So we have a running five-year average as well. This data is presented in volumetric percent, percent of variance and graphic formats. Five-year chart easily demonstrates the state of current storage volumes versus the past years for the same time period. Five-year chart, shown as figure eight below, clearly indicates the impact of the harsh winter of 2013 on storage volumes throughout that time frame. 
and it was obvious that the volumes in storage as the winter of 2014-2015 began were far less than what would normally be the case. So this chart then can be viewed as bullish pricing information, especially in light of the prior winter. Now bullish from the standpoint that the market will have to buy gas specifically for storage so they're prepared for the following winter.